system to, to get this party started. Okay, so this is our first virtual meeting at Montreal Python, and I'm really excited as one of the founding members of Montreal Python who could not attend for many years to, to be your master of ceremony tonight. Uh, it's going to be about 90 minutes of exciting content, and this is a, uh, a virtually dynamic combo of both this live uh, meeting and a hackathon that we're going to have in two weeks. So, so stay tuned because we're going to tell you about this hackathon that we're going to have to fight this annoying COVID-19 crisis. And uh, please join us on Slack if you can. And if you can't, we're going to figure out how to get you on Slack. Alors, uh, if you're on Slack, remember, we have a code of conduct. Uh, we ask you to be excellent um, between one another. So if there's something not working in the topic of the Slack channel, uh, you, you, you have the list of people to contact and, and tell us what's going wrong, and we're going to do our best to solve that. Alors, uh, bonsoir à tous et à toutes. On va commencer dans un tout petit instant. Alors, Emma, si tu veux te préparer, je te passe la parole dans un instant. Um, please join us on Slack if you can, and if you can't, we're going to solve that. Non, je dis ça en français. Uh, Joignez-vous à nous sur Slack. Euh, si ça fonctionne, et puis si ça fonctionne pas, on va trouver une manière de régler ça. On a un code de conduite à Montréal Python, et euh, on vous demande à tous et à toutes d'être excellents les uns envers les autres. Et s'il y a un problème, vous avez la liste des personnes à qui contacter euh, dans le, le topic du canal sur Slack. Et puis, dites-nous là, et on va faire de notre mieux pour régler ça euh, sans plus attendre. Donc... Notre première présentatrice ce soir, en direct de Paris, est Emmanuel Gouillard. Emmanuel est une uh, uh, core contributor, comment on dit ça en français, je ne sais pas, uh, de SciPy et uh, de Scikit Image. C'est aussi une des organisatrices de Euro SciPy et elle va nous parler de traitement de données interactifs avec Scikit Image. Emmanuel, je te passe l'écran et la parole. Hi everyone, bonsoir Montréal Python. Um, so thanks a lot to the organizers to keep the momentum of uh, the community going. It's a, a really great idea to have this uh, uh, virtual meeting and it's a great pleasure for me to talk about uh, image processing uh, with uh, open source tools to which I contribute, namely Dash and Scikit-Image. Uh, so, I am a um, Python developer here at Plotly in Montreal, and I'm also uh, a member of the Scikit-Image uh, core developers team. And um, the, the work I'm going to present here is, um, so some of it is funded by CZDI, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, and I would like to thank CZDI for their support to uh, open source uh, software and science. So uh, let me start by saying a few words uh, about how I got into software development. Before I came to Montreal, I was running a material science lab, a research lab, and uh, I was studying glass at high temperature and for this doing a lot of uh, imaging studies with uh, x-ray at high temperature and this resulted in large and noisy data sets and um, image processing was required to transform this data into scientific results and this is how I got into developing being a developer of scikit image uh, roughly at the time when it was created. So during several years, I mostly considered open source software as a hobby and a way to make, uh, to meet uh, great people and friends. But at some point, um, I realized that uh, turning a hobby into a job could be a, a great idea. And this is how I joined Plotly uh, one year ago. And at Plotly, 
I work mostly on making image processing more interactive thanks to uh, data visualization and interactive apps with uh, the Plotly and Dash tools. So we're going to talk about image processing and images are a very widespread source of data, both in science and business. In research, uh, you want to transform uh, images into numbers by carefully measuring some uh, properties of objects in images. It can be in life sciences where you have cells or organs, but also in physics or in astronomy, uh, in other applications like in autonomous cars, you want to be able to detect objects and distances uh, in real time and with really good reliability. Uh, you have other source of data such as satellite imaging, which you can use to uh, study traffic congestion or uh, climate change and, and so on and so forth. So nowadays, a lot of image processing is done using machine learning and in particular, deep neural nets uh, for the image processing task. And this figure illustrates different kind of tasks of image processing from image classification, where you want to attribute a label here, balloons, to an image. This is what you have in Google Images, for example, to instant segmentation, where you want to be able to attribute, uh, to label all the pixels corresponding to different objects. So for this uh, deep learning algorithms to work well, you need to have a really good training set. A training set is uh, a set of images with ground truth data that is already labeled images with all the pixels of each object, for example. And for this, you need to do what's called image annotation. So image annotation means that a user needs to uh, label some of the pixels, for example, to outline uh, a rough outline of some uh, objects or to draw bounding boxes around some objects here, or it can be also to draw a very accurate drawing or contour of uh, some objects. So this is for machine learning, but also for more classical image processing algorithms. It can be useful to annotate images to mark some pixels as seeds for region growing algorithms or uh, as landmarks for image registration algorithms. And uh, what I'm going to show you is uh, how to use uh, an interactive web application for image annotation. Uh, because let, let's say that now we want to build an image annotation pipeline and um, we will want to uh, base it on web technologies because you will need people, you will need to share the application between different people, all the people who are going to label uh, the images. It represents a huge amount of work, but also people doing some quality control on annotations, etc. So let me now introduce uh, the Dash. Uh, what is Dash? Dash is um, a framework for building uh, web applications in uh, pure Python, uh, and in, in particular, analytical, uh, visual, graphical web applications. And um, so Dash is open source. It's developed mostly by Plotly, but uh, we also have great contributions from the, the community of users. And the promise of Dash is that you will write your web application in pure Python uh, without any JavaScript required. Here is a small code snippet to show you a hello world uh, web app written in Dash. So this is a whole app. Uh, it's a Python script, and when you run it with Python, it will start a Dash uh, server to run the app. And to define the app, you see here that in the layout, you define several components. 
uh, one of which is an interactive component, namely a text input. And uh, the other one is a simple div. And below, you see uh, these lines are to define a callback, which is a function called when one component here, the input is uh, changed. And uh, it means that um, the output component here, the div, will change when the input is changed. So uh, you see it's only a few lines of Python code to have a fully interactive app. So this is, of course, only a Hello World app. But if you go to uh, the gallery of uh, Dash applications, which is here, uh, you will see that you have um, a, a lot of apps which are highly customizable with uh, a lot of uh, uh, di different um, components and uh, apps that are styled uh, with uh, some CSS. And so in a, a, a typical app, dash app, you see that you have uh, classical components well, like, like sliders, or uh, let me go to full screen. Um, so here you have this app where you have, but interactive graphs like here are also uh, first class components of Dash apps. So uh, interactive graphs can. Uh, change when some other components are changed, like here the slider. But it's also uh, possible for the graphs to emit some events, like here this selection uh, will change this other graph. So uh, the graph component of Dash apps usually uses Plotly graphing library as a backend, but it can use other graphing libraries too. So let me go back to the slides. Um, here is another example of uh, a styled app. And uh, I also want to mention, so here is a, a Python meetup. So I will only talk about Python, but you can also use Dash for R and uh, now uh, the Julia language as well. Inside Dash apps, uh, you can use uh, a lot of uh, on-the-shelf components. So in the Dash HTML components package, you have the usual HTML elements, uh, like titles, for example. And um, you have also the Dash core components uh, package, which is for uh, reactive components, like uh, by reactive, I mean components which uh, the user can interact with, so sliders, drop downs, radio buttons, and so on. Uh, we have seen uh, the plotly graphs, and we will talk more about it uh, later on. There is also a first class uh, data table components for uh, visualizing data in a table, some specialized library. And uh, the component factory, which is used by Dash uh, to, uh, to, to build components, is a React JavaScript framework. And what's very interesting is uh, that you have thousands of existing React.js components available on NPM, which is a JavaScript equivalent of uh, PyPy. Uh, so it's possible to uh, pa package uh, one of these components and to use it directly uh, with Dash. Um, and when we uh, decided to uh, build image annotation apps with Dash, uh, we started by writing a prototype component for image annotation called Dash Canvas. Uh, based on existing React libraries, uh, React and JavaScript libraries, uh, Fabric.js and uh, React Sketch. And I will show you a small demo of uh, this Dash Canvas component. So uh, here is a Dash app for image annotation. And so you have uh, this uh, image which is displayed, plus a toolbar with different tools for 
image annotation. And you can see that here I'm drawing on uh, the image. Uh, I think I also have the code somewhere, which is here. So here is where I defined my uh, dash component. So it's an object, which is part of the layout uh, of the app. And what I'm going to do now is press this button. And uh, when, it, when I press the button, I change the JSON data, which is a string with all the annotations. And it called a, a callback using some image processing algorithm, I will talk more about it later, uh, to segment uh, the two cells here in this biology image uh, from the annotation. So here is the first example of uh, Dash Canvas. Uh, you can install it from PyPy. Uh, there is also uh, a gallery of examples. And uh, I will come back to the example to show you that uh, with Dash Canvas, you can have some different annotations. You can uh, draw uh, freehand forms, but also rectangles, lines, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, you can modify uh, the annotations, like rotate them, etc. And uh, so you can define some parameters of the annotations, like uh, colors, widths, and so on, uh, either in the constructor of the dash canvas object or in callbacks, modifying these properties. Uh, all these properties can be modified in callbacks. So uh, with the dash canvas package, you have this object for image, this component, this dash component for image annotation. And uh, you also have some utility functions to manipulate these annotations uh, using other packages of the Python ecosystem, like NumPy and Scikit-Image. So we will talk more about it later on. Um, so here are some snippets of uh, code using Dash Canvas. Uh, you see that it's a question of uh, defining the Dash Canvas object with an image file and uh, some optional parameters. Uh, you can take a look at the gallery of examples if you want to know more. But now that uh, we have used this prototype for a while, what uh, we are doing now is to try to integrate these drawing tools into uh, the Plotly graphing library, which is uh, a widely used graphing library in uh, data science in particular. Plotly is actually the most widely downloaded uh, web-based library in Python uh, these days. And um, with Plotly, you get a lot of different uh, traces which you can plot, like uh, scatter plots, bar plots, pie plots, and also more advanced plots, like for example, this uh, scatter, uh, scatter matrix here, which is very interactive. Like for example, if you select some part of the data, it will update uh, the other subplots. So, uh, Plotly is in fact a JavaScript library. In fact, with Plot and Dash, you don't have to write a JavaScript, but uh, the devs write a lot of JavaScript for you to get all the interactivity in the browser. Uh, it's the same with uh, the sliders and the drop downs, which we saw. There is, of course, a lot of JavaScript uh, executed behind the scenes so that you get uh, the interactivity in the browser. And so since we have a very large number of users already using uh, the Plotly graphing library, we thought, uh, could, can we integrate the drawing tools uh, into Plotly and not only in our new prototype dash canvas component? So with um, Plotly, you have in um, the layout of uh, Plotly figures, like here I define a, a Plotly figure, you can add what is called a, a shape. And a shape is really uh, uh, 
a shape like a rectangle, a circle, or a line. And uh, in the current uh, versions of Plotly, which are already released, you can edit these shapes, like here in this example. So here is a dash app with uh, a Plotly uh, um, a figure. And here I have a line shape. And I can modify it. Um, and when I do this, uh, I can trigger inside my dash app here uh, a relay out data event, meaning that something changed in the layout of my figure. And uh, this is what is used to uh, plot the, the profiles of the different channels, the red, the green, and blue along the, the line if you want to inspect the intensity values of uh, your image. So this is already available with uh, the current versions of Plotly, but uh, you cannot, with this example, you cannot draw uh, a new shape. However, uh, in the next versions of uh, Plotly, this will be possible uh, as in the Dash Canvas uh, demo I, I showed you uh, a few minutes before. And I cannot resist uh, to showing you how it will look like uh, using the some development version of Plotly. So um, what you will get in your figure is a mo the mode bar. So you may be familiar already with the mode bar of Plotly figures, but you will have additional buttons like for drawing rectangles, circles, uh, closed paths, and so on. So let's say that here I want to annotate uh, some cars to build an autonomous car uh, app. I want, let's say, a different color uh, for different objects, etc. And uh, I can move to another image, go back. You see the annotations come back, which means that all the annotations are wired to other components here database uh, thanks to callbacks. So uh, the, you can draw the annotations, but you can also get them uh, to uh, uh, do something in your app from the annotations. So uh, thanks to my colleague, uh, Moshtaba Samimi, who is implementing at the moment uh, this uh, shape drawing tools. Uh, this feature will be included in the next release of Plotly, Plotly 4.7. Um, we have a tentative release day on May 1st, so stay tuned, it should come uh, really soon. But now that you have uh, uh, this uh, geometry of your annotations, so either in Dash Canvas or in a few days in Plotly figures, what can you do with these annotations? In a few cases, uh, you are able to uh, plug these annotations into a machine learning, a deep learning pipeline directly. But in a lot of cases, you need some pre-processing, some data cleaning, and you need some further processing um, on the annotations. So what you... Um, What's fortunate is that uh, Dash is written in Python. Well, you, you can write Dash apps in Python. And with Python, uh, you get all the PyData ecosystem, which is really batteries included, meaning that you have a lot of packages for performing different tasks. Here, I showed an example from uh, the Dash Gallery, uh, which is using scikit-learn uh, the machine learning Python package to uh, perform a classification of uh, images of digits and to represent this classification in a low dimensional space. Uh, Scikit-learn is part of this scientific uh, Python ecosystem, which is relying on NumPy numerical data array, which is the object used for numerical computations. And uh, for image processing, uh, we will now talk about scikit-image, which is like a sister package to scikit-learn, but for image processing. 
So Scikit Image is a toolbox for scientific image processing in Python. It's uh, open source, it's uh, a library, meaning that it's not uh, an end user application. So it's meant to be user in your own scripts or in third party libraries or applications. It focuses on scientific images and therefore uh, it's able to process both 2D and 3D images like in MRI or CT. Um, from the statistics of uh, visits of the documentation websites, psychicimage.org, we estimate that we have around 20,000 unique visitors per month. Uh, let's say active, uh, active users of psychicimage. So the number of uh, core developers, maintainers is uh, quite small, but we are happy to have uh, a large community of contributors and uh, we are always happy uh, to have uh, people helping along. We are actively looking for diversity of contributors. So if you're interested in contributing either to Psychic Image or Dash or Plotly, uh, it'd be absolutely great. So we can talk also on the, on the Slack about this if you're interested. Uh, here is a short example of uh, some first steps with Psychic Image showing you typical code. So what you do usually is to start uh, opening an image array uh, from an image file. So you get this numerical NumPy array. And then what you will do is uh, to use uh, the functional API of Psychic Image, meaning that uh, Psychic Image consists of functions. And you will call a function like this thresholding binarizing function on the array which will return another numerical array, another image, and uh, on which you can call uh, another function, like here, this labeling uh, function to label the different uh, connected components, and so on and so forth to build uh, your image processing pipeline. So most people actually use scikit image for only uh, let's say two or three uh, functions, uh, which are very useful for them. Uh, they use Psychic Image really as a, as a toolbox. And uh, unsurprisingly, the most widely used function of Psychic Image is uh, an I IO function, imread, uh, which opens an image file name to uh, produce a numerical array. Uh, but we also have some uh, functions for manipulating color channels, functions for uh, performing geometrical transforms. Like, for example, imagine that uh, in your Dash app, uh, you want to correct uh, slanted horizon uh, thanks to user annotation. So uh, from the annotation, correcting the horizon, it just calling as one single uh, function from Psychic Image uh, transform that rotate. And um, in the previous example where I was drawing a profile to, uh, a I was drawing a line to display a line profile, I used one of uh, the numerous measurement tools uh, shipped with Psychic Image, which is this uh, draw.line function. So here it's not draw and line in the sense of uh, real annotations, but in the sense of returning uh, pixel coordinates uh, from which you can get uh, the pixel values and plot the, the profile. Uh, but on top of this, um, let's say, boilerplate utility functions, you also have uh, really more advanced algorithms, for example, for image uh, filtering, like if you want to remove noise inside images, uh, we will talk a little more about feature extraction also for image segmentation. And uh, I think I have another app <clears throat> where I want to uh, show you if I want to, uh, let's say I'm a doctor and I want to measure things on this organ, but I don't want to spend a lot of time just uh, delineating the contour here. Uh, what is called is uh, one of uh, 
the segmentation algorithms of psychic image, which is uh, called active contours. It's a kind of magic scissors uh, algorithm. So once again, it's really a one-liner, uh, just one single function uh, called uh, uh, on the geometry of your annotation. So uh, it's really easy to plug uh, dash plotly for the annotations and uh, psychic image for processing these annotations. So, Psychic Image is not a deep learning uh, package at all uh, because uh, it doesn't do any GPU uh, computation, but it can be used for pre processing and uh, post processing. And I want to show you a last example about um, uh, performing this time classical machine learning. Uh, using scikit image and uh, scikit learn. So you have a full uh, sub module of scikit image, uh, which is dedicated to extracting uh, features out of images. So these features can be either points of interest or uh, features characteristic of some patches of pixels, etc. And uh, let me show you this. Uh, example where, uh, let's say, I want to uh, remove the background of uh, this image. So this time it's not very scientific, but it could be used in uh, retail, for example. And uh, so I want just to draw a quick uh, squiggle on uh, this lady. And So this uh, demo, by, by the way, is uh, hosted on uh, the on uh, the the Dash Canvas uh, gallery. Here it's not plotly yet because we haven't released it uh, yet. Uh, I guess uh, there is some transfer over the network. Uh, but if it doesn't work, I will come back to my movie okay so you you will see you see here uh, that uh, the the way it works is that uh, psychic image computes uh, features of uh, patches which are uh, under the drawing and then uh, the oh you see here it worked okay uh, it just took some time and uh, then it calls scikit-learn and a random forest classifier to classify uh, patches belonging either to the object of interest or to the background. And here is uh, how you get the segmentation, which you can correct. Let's say here, uh, I didn't have everything. I would like a little more. I can start again until I have my, my ground truth. OK. Um, so, uh, to conclude on uh, Psychic Image, Plotly, and Dash, I would like to say that all these packages uh, come with a very extensive example-based documentation uh, for Psychic Image. You have, in particular, a gallery of examples based on uh, the Sphinx gallery package, but it's also the case for Plotly and Dash, uh, which include a lot of tutorial based on examples. So it's really uh, meant uh, so that uh, you can get started quickly and uh, find a lot of examples uh, helping you to build your own apps. And uh, as uh, a conclusion, uh, I hope I have convinced you that uh, it can be very powerful to plug together some uh, Python packages like Dash uh, and Dash and Plotly for the visualization, uh, the interactivity and um, uh, some uh, computational uh, libraries like scikit-learn or scikit-image uh, for running algorithms, performing heavy-duty computations. Uh, you, you can get uh, really advanced apps uh, in a very short time. And uh, since I know that in two weeks you're having a hackathon about uh, COVID-19 data, uh, I would like to say that uh, there are actually a very large number on existing dashboards uh, for visualizing COVID data with Dash. 
Uh, here I have uh, one example, but uh, if you want to see uh, a lot of them, uh, you can go to the community forum of uh, Plotly and Dash. This is, by the way, where you ask for help about Plotly and Dash. And in the show and tell section, you have um, a, a lot of people who have advertised their COVID-19 dashboards. Uh, a lot of them include uh, the source code on GitHub. So if you want to give it a try, uh, it can be interesting. And uh, uh, I contributed to one of these uh, dashboards, which is uh, here, where uh, you can uh, visualize the uh, number of uh, active cases for different countries, either by uh, clicking on uh, some countries or uh, by uh, clicking in a table. Uh, let's say I don't want Italy. You can uh, use radio buttons to switch between uh, linear and log scale, uh, between confirmed cases and fatalities. So, uh, my talk was mostly focused on image processing, but of course you have um, a large number of other potential applications. Here in this dashboard, we use the stats models uh, Python package to make some statistical analysis of past data and uh, predict uh, a forecast of what would happen in the next day, uh, for example. So this is uh, another example of uh, what's uh, possible with uh, the PyData ecosystem. So I, I think uh, I'm out of time now. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, and, um, oh, I, I had a challenge. Um, okay. Um, so uh, I, I hope uh, you enjoyed the talk and uh, I will be very happy to answer questions uh, in English, in French, uh, as you wish. Thank Excellent. you. Th thank you so much, Emmanuel. Um, everyone, you can ask questions on Slack or on the YouTube uh, stream as a comment. And I'm going to invite Isabel, our moderator, to relay these questions. So, so uh, Emmanuel, you, you're free to, to just uh, keep your screens on, on examples if that helps to, to uh, answer the questions. And uh, yeah, everyone, please uh, uh, ask uh, freely on Slack or on YouTube and Simon and Edith, you are going to be next, so please get ready. And I leave it to Isabel. Hi, Emma. Thanks for the oh. meeting. Uh, we had one question during your presentation. Uh, mm -hmm. You might already have answered. Uh, I'm not sure. And the question was, how is any of this possible without JavaScript? Uh, thank you very much, Isabel. It's a really good question, and maybe I went too fast on this part. And um, so, of course, there is JavaScript behind the scenes. That is, uh, when I uh, move this slider, for example, uh, some JavaScript code is executed uh, to update uh, this uh, figure, which is, by the way, a Plotly figure, so Plotly is a JavaScript library, so uh, a, a lot of JavaScript is happening, but when you write uh, the Dash app or when you write a code for a Plotly figure, you uh, write only Python code, which itself uh, calls JavaScript code. But the difference is uh, the libraries, which uh, have a lot of JavaScript code, and what developers can do, uh, which is uh, using only Python. But uh, uh, for example, the, the developers uh, of uh, Plotly and Dash write a lot of JavaScript uh, code so that you, Dash users, don't have to write this JavaScript. Uh, I hope it was clear. Uh, yeah, very clear. Thank you for answering that. Mm -hmm. That's all we have for questions. OK. Um, maybe I have a question, like uh, <laughs> if, if, if some people want to, uh, to ask questions later on, is it possible to do it on the Slack of Montreal Python? And if yes, on which uh, channel? Yannick, do you want to take that? 
Yes, certainly. Uh, so, so channel meeting is perfect. It's very low volume right now, so I don't think there's going to be too much noise if people want to ask on channel meeting on the Montreal Python Slack. So that's mtlpy.slack.com. And if you want to join, uh, you can follow the link that we posted as a comment on the YouTube stream, which is mtlpy.org slash fr slash slack in. Uh, it's a little bit long. So, so go on YouTube on the stream and, and find the Montreal Python comment and, and, uh, with the link to join Slack. Uh, channel meeting, uh, very low volume right now. That, so that I think is the best place to ask questions. And I think that uh, Emmanuel uh, can answer your questions maybe right now. It's getting a little bit late for her now or, or <laughs> perhaps tomorrow. Hopefully she'll we be have another space. question that just popped, Yannick. Do we have time to take it? We have time for one more question. Okay, it's from Colin. And the question is, I've seen similarities between Schemage and OpenCV. How are they different? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, so, uh, Scikit-Image and OpenCV have uh, some uh, similarities, but uh, so OpenCV is really for uh, computer vision, uh, for example, uh, object detection, uh, processing of uh, video streams, uh, whereas Scikit-Image focuses more on uh, uh, scientific image processing, uh, images for, from biology or uh, from uh, astronomy. And in particular, with psychic image, it's possible to process uh, images in uh, 3D, uh, sometimes even in more dimensions than just uh, three dimensions. For example, if you have uh, high sp spectral images from satellite images uh, and so on. Um, so it's maybe a little bit more versatile uh, for the types of images which you can process. And also, um, Scikit image is a uh, uh, natively Python library, uh, which is really well integrated with the rest of the, the Python ecosystem. It has a, a strong focus on documentation. So I think the learning curve of Scikit image is a bit easier than the one of OpenCV. So these are for the advantages of uh, Scikit image. Uh, on the other hand, uh, OpenCV has also some advantages because it's very fast. Uh, it uses some very optimized uh, C++ code, but uh, we are working at the moment to uh, try to bridge this gap and uh, to accelerate Scikit image functions so that you will have uh, the very rapid speed together with uh, uh, the good documentation and uh, the 3D uh, possibilities. Awesome. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you. Thank you so much. If uh, people have more questions, you can ask on our Slack channel. And here is how you join uh, mtlpi.org slash fr slash slackin. And uh, our next presenters are going to be uh, or our next presenter is actually an interview. Uh, Simon Saint-Germain, uh, responsible de mise en marché chez Pixmob, is going to tell us about being uh, flexible and adaptable in, in this time of crisis. And he's going to be interviewed by Edith from Montreal Python, who is a student at Université de Montréal and also a contributor to the Mutech AI Art Lab. I leave it up to you guys. Bonjour. Bonjour. Ça fonctionne? Bon, oui. excellent. Désolée, euh, je m'étais mutée. Euh, bonjour, ça va bien? Oui, ça va bien, toi? Oui. Uh, we're going to do the interview both in French and English. Uh, we can try to cover every question in both languages. Uh, we, can, we might also forget some information. So if you ever feel that um, the information we covered wasn't, uh, we didn't exactly say the same thing or something was missing, please feel free to tell us and to uh, ask your questions in the uh, meeting channel on Slack. Uh, donc, on va essayer de faire l'entrevue en français en anglais. On va pas nécessairement faire exactement les mêmes informations dans les deux langues. On va essayer de peut-être alterner les questions, les informations. Euh, si vous, jamais vous avez des questions dans l'une ou l'autre des langues, euh, tout ça se passe sur le channel meeting sur notre Slack. 
donc, euh, voici pour les petites informations pour l'entrevue. Donc, euh, mon objectif avec cette entrevue, c'est de vous préparer au hackathon qu'on organise qui va avoir lieu dans deux semaines, du 1er au 3 mai, euh, au sujet duquel euh, il va, je vais faire une présentation euh, complète dans quelques minutes. Et puis, euh, c'est un peu d'aller couvrir des questions sur comment on peut euh, réagir en tant qu'organisme, en tant qu'entreprise, en temps de crise, pour s'adapter et euh, faire face à la crise. So, uh, my, my interview will be about uh, how to adapt oneself and how to adapt a business or an, uh, um, an organism. That doesn't sound well. Um, how to adapt um, a business in time of crisis. Um, so, first, uh, let's begin with the shortest introduction of Simon uh, Saint-Germain, who uh, works at PixMob. What is PixMob and what is your role in the business? Uh, Est-ce que tu peux nous parler un peu de PixMob et de son rôle dans la compagnie? Oui, alors, euh, ben, premièrement, merci euh, merci de, de me recevoir. Alors, PixMob est une, une compagnie généralement connue pour des bracelets LED qui illuminent des foules durant des spectacles. Donc, euh, peu, peu de gens vont l'avouer, mais souvent, nous ont vu dans soit la tournée de Taylor Swift ou dans un spectacle de Shawn Mendes ou quelque chose comme ça. Euh, mais on a été évidemment beaucoup reconnus cette année pour avoir fait le spectacle de la mi-temps du Super Bowl. Donc, euh, on fait des bracelets qui illuminent pendant ces spectacles-là, mais on a aussi une plateforme euh, d'objets connectés qui s'appelle Click. Et euh, cette plateforme-là est surtout connue dans la région de Montréal là, pour euh, être la plateforme de C2 Montréal. Donc, euh, euh, on, donc, on est évidemment très axé sur, euh, sur l'événementiel. OK, euh, excellent. Um... Donc, étant donné que vous êtes très axé sur l'événementiel, sur j'imagine que euh, vous avez été parmi les, les premiers à être affectés par la crise. Ouais, euh, quel était, euh, oui, ma question c'était, quelle a été votre réaction initiale face à la crise? What was your initial reaction to the crisis? Right, so, um, so yes, we've been impacted from the get-go and I just realized that I haven't answered your first question, which is what I do there, what I do at Pixmom. So I'm uh, responsible for uh, the marketing there. Um, mostly on the Click side, so which is the, the smart wearable uh, platform, but I've been responsible for, for both brands, so Click and PixMob for the past three years now. Um, so going back to what we've done first, so uh, as you said, because we are in the event industry, we uh, have been affected by the crisis extremely early on. So I would say end of January, beginning of February, we started to see a lot of cancellations, a lot of of events that are being pushed forward in, in the future, but without any uh, uh, dates or whatever. So we started to see this, this, this wave of cancellation coming in very quickly. So we realized very fast that we would have to most likely change our business model or whatever we do. So what we've done is, uh, is we've break down extremely quickly the whole company. So about a hundred uh, people into five little groups to work on what we call innovation projects. And uh, those groups were called, um, I just said it, innovation projects, and they were really set up as startups. So come up with a solution very quickly, pitch it the client very quickly, fail very quickly, be successful very quickly, and don't get attached to, idea, to the idea. The objective was to find a new way to either use our technology or something new to, uh, uh, to make it through this crisis. I see. So you might say, um, you've answered my second question, which was, how was planned the business reaction to the crisis? Comment avez-vous planifié votre réponse d'entreprise face à la crise? Donc, le but, le, 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 la réponse d'entreprise a vraiment été d'organiser des groupes d'innovation, des, des petites équipes sur des petits projets, euh, itérer rapidement, avoir des nouvelles idées, les, les voir échouer ou succéder rapidement aussi. Oui, exact, um, exactement. Oui, vas-y. Exactement, mais... On savait qu'on avait une période devant nous relativement courte pour s'adapter. Euh, ça reste qu'on est, on, on, comme je disais, on est une centaine de personnes. On ne savait pas à, à, à quelle vitesse tout ça allait aller. Est-ce qu est que ça allait reprendre magiquement du jour au lendemain? Euh, mais on savait que notre, notre période pour s'adapter allait être courte. Euh, et et aujourd'hui, c'est sûr qu'en ce moment, ce qu'on est en train de regarder, c'est plus sur le long terme. Donc, voir ben, les nouvelles entités qu'on a créées, les nouvelles idées qu'on a développées, comment est-ce qu'on va faire vivre ça à long terme? 
Ça, c'est intéressant, la, 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 la question du long terme. C'est une des questions que j'aimerais amener dans, dans l'Hackathon aussi, de voir, euh, il y a beaucoup d'initiatives qui, qui, ont, qui ont émergé euh, récemment euh, pour faire face à la crise et puis euh, qui pourraient être intéressantes à faire vivre dans le long terme. Euh, pour continuer un peu sur le sujet, qu'est-ce qui pourrait permettre à un projet de se concrétiser en temps de crise? What could help a project become a reality in times of crisis? Um... I th well, you know, I'm 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 a marketing person. I'm a marketing person, so I will have to say that you have to have a market uh, for your idea. Um, a a good idea is 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 great, but if you don't have anyone to buy it, to buy in, to found you, to whatever, to keep it alive, your idea will go nowhere. Even though if it's a good idea, um, and those who think that a good idea will always find someone to buy in, um. Ugh, that's kind of hard to that's kind of hard to 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 prove um so you know you you have to work on ideas that have potential for being commercialized and then unless you are an ngo and you're you're not doing this for the money which is good for you uh but most of the times you need to have a market and that's what we've done we have we started up with five projects i would say that right now we are we are concentrating on on two that have a longer term perspective and one that has a mid term perspective that we know will will fade away because of the market but we're trying to have some sort of vision to 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 see how this could be uh could this could this prevail uh throughout the crisis great um so just to come back on innovation group the groups innovation euh, ma, ma question, ça va être sur euh, quels est, quel est les différents profils qui sont dans ces groupes d'innovation là. Que, quels sont, euh, qu'est-ce qui fait en sorte qu'un groupe d'innovation va euh, performer et euh, arriver rapidement avec des projets concrets qui sont intéressants um, Je pense que c'est euh, c'est ce qui fait la, la force euh, euh, de Pixmob là. C'est-à-dire que à la base, on n'est pas juste une compagnie. Euh, on, on, on évolue dans l'industrie événementielle, mais on a une grappe de talent à l'interne qui est énorme. Euh, on a des gens en marketing, on a des gens en vente, on a des, euh, on a des software euh, euh, engineers, on a des programmeurs, on a, on a de tout. La, la, la seule chose à peu près qu'on n'a pas, c'est une chèvre, euh, mais euh, on a de tout. Et ce qu'on qu a décidé de faire, c'est de, de, de mettre chacun de ces talents-là dans les équipes. Euh, donc, il y avait quelqu'un de marketing, quelqu'un de vente, quelqu'un de comptabilité, quelqu'un de quoi que comptabilité avait honnêtement d'autres choses à gérer pendant ce temps-là, euh, mais quelqu'un de hardware, de software qui était dans la même équipe et l'idée était de, de, de venir avec des nouvelles idées. Euh, donc, euh, l'autre chose qu'on a fait, c'est qu'on a éliminé les, les rôles et, et les hiérarchies. Donc, il n'y a plus vraiment de hiérarchie dans l'entreprise qui est... Parfois un peu bizarre, qui se fait en sorte qu'on se retrouve dans, dans des situations un peu bizarres, mais on a éliminé euh, euh, plusieurs euh, niveaux hiérarchiques dans l'entreprise et les rôles sont aussi rendus complètement fluides. Donc, quelqu'un qui faisait de la production auparavant peut maintenant se retrouver chef de produit pour un projet. OK. okay. C'est vraiment euh, intéressant comme, euh, comme façon de faire face à la situation. Euh, Est-ce qu'on a des questions par, euh, du public en ce moment? Je n'ai pas l'impression. Peut-être sur YouTube? Non. Non? OK. Bon, j'imagine que ça veut dire que tout ça est bien clair et intéressant. Euh, euh, avant de se quitter, peut-être, est-ce euh, qu'il y aurait euh, un, un mot, un conseil, euh, euh, a word or advice for people who want to participate in hackathon and start projects in this time of crisis? Um, if I would say two things, depending on what kind of projects you're working on. Um, again, being the marketing guy, I'm going back to the fact that you need to do this for a certain person. So validate the need or validate the challenge you're trying to meet or validate whatever you're working on. Make sure that you talk to people that will um, do this. Uh, uh, the second thing I, I would say is fail fast. And I like... Um, That's what we've done, and we are a business that has a cash flow, some revenue, some expenses, and so on and so on. So in the, in, in, in the situation you'll be faced uh, with, I think that failing fast is extremely important. So And don't be afraid to fail, and don't be afraid to, to get those feedback 
uh, those negative feedback. Um, you know, we've worked on some projects throughout this crisis where we got to the point where we sat down with clients and they were saying, well, no, like we're not, we're not going to buy into it. Like this is not worth it. We're not going to put our money behind this. And we're like, oh, all right. Although we love the idea, you have to scrap it extremely quickly and move on to something else. So don't be afraid to fail fast and go get some feedback from the market. Great. Thank you. Merci. Um, um, that was the interview. Um, so if anybody wants to join us on Slack, again, uh, it's in the meeting channel and we'll take a question through the evening. And thank you. Merci, Simon. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Simon. Merci. Excellent. Et puis, euh, ben, on, on garde Edith en ligne ici. Et euh, Edith, elle va nous, oui. nous parler de ce hackathon virtuel qu'on va organiser dans deux semaines. Eh bien, je te passe la parole, Edith. Merci. Je vais juste okay. sortir mes diapositives. Ben oui, oui, puis je, je sais pas si... Oui, excellent. OK. Euh, bonjour tout le monde. Donc, euh, en tant que cours d'eau euh, de glacier tonique Tonic Glacier, je vais vous parler du hackathon qui, compte, qui, qui est la deuxième partie euh, du combo euh, virtuel euh, de l'édition 76 de Montréal Python. Euh, voici notre magnifique bannière. Euh, donc, euh, glacier tonique du 1er au 3 mai 2020. C'est un hackathon euh, virtuel en ligne, etc. On se rejoint sur Slack, on forme des équipes, on pitch des idées. Euh, L'objectif, c'est de faire émerger des projets qui vont nous permettre de faire face à la crise. Euh, donc oui, faire émerger des projets pertinents dans le cadre de la crise sanitaire de la COVID-19. Uh, so, for Tony Glacier Hackathon, it's a virtual hackathon. We get together on Slack. It's from May 1st to May 3 And um, so it's in two weekends next week. Yes, it's in two weekends. Um, our objective is to level up on relevant projects in the public health crisis context of the COVID-19. Hackathon. À quoi s'attendre? Euh, on a daté un peu le contexte du, du le concept d'hackathon pour un hackathon virtuel. Donc, euh, premièrement, vendredi, on pitch les projets. Les participants sont invités à se joindre sur Slack afin de réseauter, d'échanger leurs idées, de mettre leurs projets de l'avant et de former des équipes, une équipe par projet. Samedi, on élabore les prototypes, on fait de la démonstration d'un produit ou d'un service qui, euh, on réalise le projet, en fond, là, un, une sorte de, de, de MVP, de Minimum Viable Product, pour démontrer notre idée. Dimanche, c'est les présentations des projets. Euh, on n'est pas une compétition, on n'a pas de prix à donner. Um, mais on veut mettre de l'avant les projets qui ont été réalisés ou qui ont été uh, continués pendant l'hackathon. So, hackathon, what to expect? We adapted the virtual, uh, the, the, the presential model of, uh, of hackathon to a virtual context. On Friday, we do project pitches. So, participants coming on Slack present their projects, go do some networking and regroup themselves in teams, one team by project. On Saturday, there's a liberation of a prototype or a demonstration of the product or service that is the actual project. So we work on our project and we try to come up with an MVP with a minimum viable product. And on Sunday, it's presentation time. Everybody is invited to present their project um, and to promote the future of the project. Uh, so participate, join us. Euh, c'est ouvert à tous les projets pertinents, pas besoin d'utiliser Python. C'est ouvert au grand public, pas besoin d'être un développeur ou une développeuse. It's open to all relevant projects. You don't have to use Python. Uh, open to everyone, even if you're not a developer. Information. All information is on our website. Toute l'information sur notre site web. Um, donc, sur le site web de Montréal Python. La... la, la L'adresse va être postée sur euh, le channel meeting dans quelques instants. Euh, join us on Slack. Hashtag Hackathon dans le channel Hackathon. Euh, Joignez-vous à nous sur Slack, sur le channel Hackathon. Euh, C'était tout ce que j'avais à dire pour le moment pour Glacier Tonique. Notre objectif, c'est vraiment de d'amener les gens à travailler ensemble. Si vous avez déjà des idées, si vous avez déjà des projets en cours, venez vous inscrire. Euh, Écrivez-nous si vous avez des besoins. On, on va... Euh, on va faire de notre mieux pour rassembler le plus de gens possible autour de, euh, de, de des projets qui sont en lien avec la crise euh, 
qui, à laquelle nous faisons face en ce moment. So join us for Tonic Glacier. This was all I had to say for now. Um, we really want people to join and gather around projects that are relevant to the crisis. So if you have uh, specific needs, uh, please uh, let us know. And we'll try to gather the right people to uh, move forward with the projects. So merci, thank you. That was all I had to say. Merci beaucoup, Edith. Et, euh, et bien, ça conclut presque notre Montréal Python 76, Glacier Tonic, Tonic Glacier. Si vous avez des questions pour Edith ou pour Emmanuel, qui semble encore être en ligne, euh, vous pouvez nous les poser. Euh, je crains malheureusement, on a déjà perdu Simon, mais vous pouvez poser des questions sur Slack et puis on va lui, les lui relier. Euh, on invite tout le monde à remplir notre, notre petit sondage de participation pour savoir si on a bien fait ça une rencontre en ligne. So please everyone, uh, fill this little survey there, uh, bit.ly slash np-76 dash survey and tell us if we did it well to have an online uh, meeting for Montreal Python. And on that, it would not be a Montreal Python if I didn't do a glasses throw. So I'll do that just for you. And I say thank you and see you at the hackathon. Bye everyone.